Hi guys, welcome back. This is Professor Hank. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the linker program's role in the translation process. Specifically, I'm going to review with you um, how the linker combines two object uh, files into the executable file. Okay, so as part of the translation process, you know, you start off with some high-level source code, um, say C, right, in the C language. Compiler runs, and when the compiler is finished, you have an assembly program. You have a you have an assembly program full of all assembly instructions, right? Then the uh, assembler program runs and assembles the assembly code, and the output of that is one or more object files. Okay, and the object files have all uh, machine code in them, right? So we're we're looking at all of the instructions in zeros and ones. Okay. And that object file is formatted in a certain way, right? There's uh, what's known as an object file header inside of that file, and in addition to all the instructions, and that object file header is going to specify a few different things. Um, we can see over here on the left the items that we're talking about, right? So that object file header is made up of a section outlining the text segment. Uh, it's laying out the data segment. It has a section called relocation information and it has this section called the symbol table. Okay, so at the very beginning, it lays out and talks about, okay, well, here are some procedures. Uh, here's how much, um, what their text size is. In other words, how many instructions they have. Uh, here's what the data size is for this thing. Uh, and then it lays out the te actual text segment itself where you have all of your instructions and then it lays out the data segment okay and then in the relocation information section it says okay well any instruction that is depending on um, something else okay we're going to specify what it's depending on so for example um, you know, in this first entry in the, in the relocation information section, right? The load word instruction is depending on X, okay? And we can note up here that X is gonna be part of the data segment, right? So um, X is referring to a location in memory where we're gonna go and get some data from, right? That's what the load word instruction is gonna do. Um, the JAL instruction, is depending on procedure B. Now here's the thing, procedure B is defined in a second um, header file. Right? So I've got two different header files here. I got one and I got two. So in um, object file number one, uh, I'm going to be making a jump to a procedure that's defined in object file number two. Okay, so those memory addresses got to be resolved, right? I got two different object files pointing to places in the other object file, right? So I have to specify where that's at, right? So the linker needs to go through and fill in the details in terms of well, where is everything, right? Where is everything? And that question is going to be answered in terms of memory addresses, okay? So these two object files have to be combined into a single executable file. Okay, so that's that's where we're going with this, right? So once that's finished, we have a program that can actually that can actually execute, that can actually run. Okay, so object file and executable file, very similar. It's just that the object file has all of the memory addresses figured out. You know, inside of an executable file, you know where everything's going to go. The location of everything is specified. You're good. Okay, now in this example, you can see in the text segment and data segment, you know, we actually have the names of the instructions, okay? That's just for the purposes of the example. If this were, if these were real object files, you know, we, again, we'd just be zeros or ones, pure machine language, okay? But this information is encoded in each of the object files, okay? So let's just go ahead and start doing what the linker would do, okay? So in the executable file, it needs to know what the final text size is going to be, right? The text segment 
of the program, how big is it going to be? Well, how can I know? Well, if I'm combining these two object files together, I can go look in the header information. I can say, okay, well, in object file 1, 100 hex. Object file 2, 200 hex. Right? So the final text size or the final text segment size in my executable is going to be 300 hex. Okay? Now, what about the data segment? Well, look in the object file 1. It's 20 hex long. Look in object file 2. 30 hex long. So we're going to have 50 hex. Okay? So now, what about the um, instructions? Okay, so uh, the instructions that uh, need to have memory addresses resolved, right? Where, is, where, is, where are we going to start? Where's the instructions going to start? Where are they located? Where are we jumping to? Where are we loading information from? Okay, well, let's look inside of the first object file, object file one, right? So there is a load word instruction, okay? And that's going to be the first instruction in our final executable file, right? So where's that going to be in memory? Well, in MIPS programs, instructions start, right? The instructions that you write, they start at 400,000 hex, okay? So guess where the memory address, or guess what the memory address is going to be of this first instruction, this, this load instruction? That's right. 400,000 hex. Okay, so the jump instruction, which follows immediately afterwards, well, where's that going to go? Well, it's one word later, because remember, all instructions are one word. So, hopefully, you can read this okay. Its memory address is 400,000 in 4 hex, right? Now, the dot 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 in includes all the rest of the instructions that would make up the text size. We're only concerned for this example, and the link would only be concerned with um, filling in um, the addresses for the individual instructions, and also for um, you know all of the relative instructions that need to be uh, accounted for. Okay, so all the rest of these, the dot dot dots, this is the remaining instructions. You know, for the example, we won't worry about them. Okay, they would be having their memory addresses filled in just like we did for these first two. Okay. So, um, what about um, the uh, what about the location in the data segment for the beginning of the data that's being referred to as X and being referred to as Y in the um, separate object files? Okay, so those guys are going to be uh, assigned to the starting point of the data segment. So X is going to go at the very, very, very first memory address in the data segment. Now MIPS, that is at 1 million hex, right? So if uh, X is going to be the beginning, okay, of our first chunk of memory in the data segment, what's the memory address of it? One million hex. Okay. So what about the Y? Okay. Um, well, how big is the data segment in object file one? 20 hex. So the Y follows immediately after the X. So guess where that's going to be? One million and twenty x. Okay. Which reminds me, uh, what about the instructions? The beginning of the instructions from object file two. Right. Well, how big was the text segment in object file one? One hundred. Right. So, where do you think? Uh, this is going to start right here. This is where you think the uh, SW instruction is going to be at. Well, it's going to be 100 hex away from the start of the text segment from object file 1. Because all of the instructions in object file 1 occupy 100 x worth of memory. So, they're done after 100 hex. So, object file 2's instructions are going to start 
at 4100 hex. So 100 hex with instructions later. Now the jump and link instruction, one word after, right? So 400,104. Okay. Okay, so we're we're looking pretty good. Okay, so now the uh, procedure A. Okay, that is the beginning of all of the instructions, right? So procedure A is the is all these instructions right here. That, we're, we're, that we were just examining, those are all part of procedure A. So procedure A starts at 400,000 hex, right? So the jump and link instruction that was located in object file two, it's jumping to procedure A. So what memory address do you think is gonna be provided for that jump and link instruction, right? Well, it's a pseudo direct addressing instruction. So we can put the complete memory address in the instruction. So we're gonna jump to the start of procedure A. So this is gonna jump straight to 400,000 X, okay? All right, so similarly, the start of Procedure B is 40,100, right? So procedure B is the start of this text segment, right? Procedure B is made of all these instructions. So its memory address is 40,100. So guess what we're gonna put in the jump instruction that's part of procedure A? 400,100. Okay, almost done. So what do we have now? We've got the load word instruction and the store word instruction. Okay, so what are we putting here and what are we putting here? Okay, so the way that MIPS does this is that it figures out the total memory address or the complete memory address by using um, an address that is relative to a register. Which register? The GP register. Okay, now the GP register gets initialized to 1,008,000 hex. Okay, so in procedure A, that load word instruction is going to get some data from A, from, from somewhere in memory, from the, from the data segment, and you're gonna put it into register A0, okay? So where is it gonna be coming from? Well, it's relative to the GP register, okay? Now, if we go back and take a look at the relocation information section in the object file one, we can see that that load word instruction depends on X, okay? Now, where's X? It's in memory at 1 million hex. So if the GP register is initialized to 1 million 8,000, then that means that we got to move 8,000 bytes away from it to get to X. Okay. So we're going to have to subtract 8,000. So minus 8,000. Now you can't see it. Sorry, the resolution isn't the best, but that's minus 8,000. Right? Because if we take 8,000 away from 1 million 8,000, what do I get? 1 million, right? And 1 million is the location in memory of that data that we're referring to as X. Almost done. So now we got to go do the same thing for the SW instruction. So SW is relative to the GP register as well. And how far away from the GP register do we have to move to get to Y? And why do I say Y? Because if we look at the relocation information section in the file header for object file two, we can see that the store word instruction depends on Y. Where's Y? Y is at 1,020 hex. 
So we have to move from 1,800,000x to uh, 1,020x. So that means that we're going to have to subtract 7,980 to get there. Okay, because 1,008,000 minus 7,980 will get me to um, 1,020x. Okay, so once all that information has been filled out, been figured out, been computed, then the executable file finishes being constructed, the linker is done with its job, and then in the translation process we would move on to the loader. Okay, so that's everything that I wanted to show you in this video. Okay, so that's going to bring this video to a close. If you felt that the video was useful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. And if you thought that the video sucked, well, then you've got that thumbs down button as an option as well. If you'd like to see more videos, if you're interested in more content from the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. And as usual, if you're a student of mine and you have further questions, feel free to drop me an email or to stop by my office hours. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.